my t-shirt game now that I'm talking money, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make it a ball hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, um, like I really want um, an N- NWO black and red shirt. Oh, the wolf pack? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. that shit. I want it so bad, yo. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can still find, they got that on, um, like uh, the, the, uh, the rest of the world, uh, like a classic vintage wrestling tee yeah. website. Yeah. You can grab that for 30 bucks. I want that. I want one. Yeah, the, the, I want one so bad. I saw yeah. someone, uh, some of those fun Kardashian yeah, chicks wearing that the other day. Oh, oh dude, no, never mind then. Fuck that. Kylie. Oh, no, that's even worse. Kendall, Kendall. Oh, I'm finished then. I don't want <laughs> that shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Another six shirt back in the day, though. That's such a dope shirt. Double the Wolfpack really shirt. Another six dope. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Big Iggy on the track, let's go. <laughs> All right, we're rolling anyway, so let's get to it. I'm sucking their gut real quick, uh, so I'll make sure. Yeah, you got to Jason took that picture later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna be on Instagram right now, it's like, you know what I mean? With a little budget right. shit, nah, no, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. All right, guys, welcome back on the block. We got Jamal, welcome back. It's been a while. We were got the uh, summer free agency edition. Now, free agency in the summer has been kind of crazy. We've seen a lot of guys move. Um, Raptors made some deals, of course, they needed to. Boston got Boyd Hayward. And um, just we'll start at home like we always do with the Raptors. Corey Joseph, out of the city, moved him in for CJ Miles. Big fan of that move, big fan. Um, although, you know, we have our, our issues with the Raptors, I finally like one move that was signed made. And um, obviously resigning Kyle to a massive deal, three years, $100 million, and Serge, I believe, got three years and about 65. Uh, what do you guys think about the moves? Uh, I'll start off, I guess. Uh, I was all, like I was uh, stating, I was never a big fan of bringing Kyle back. And simply because I, I believe that the Raptors are in a situation where they needed to rebuild. It was a simple fact of the matter. They needed to rebuild, and yes, you know they, they brought it's only three year year deals. I was, I was thankful that it was only three years. I was, I thought Kai was going to get five, six years until he became like a 36, 37 year old point guard. Three years? Did they have a three year window here? Do I think that again? Are they going to beat LeBron? No, but at the end of the day, they're going to be competitive. The East lost, lost a lot of stars. I didn't have a problem uh, bringing Serge back. I think Serge is, is, is a decent player. Again, he wasn't. Comp- it wasn't overpaid either for, for the amount of money that some of the guys have been getting. Uh, in terms of the, the, the Corey Joseph move, that's pretty much the only addition to the roster. Uh, and also, you know, they lost uh, Damari Carroll in that trade. But to me, are, are they any better than they were last year? They, if they get a full season out of surge and maybe some chemistry, you know, him and Kyle didn't really get a lot of chemistry together and the whole unit uh, because, again, Kyle was injured for the majority of the remainder of the season and uh, most of the playoffs. So. Again, are they going to be a top five team in the East? More than likely, is that, is that going to go anywhere? Probably not. No, no. I can certainly agree. Uh, I think um, re-signing Kyle was the best possible thing for us right now because there's no other point guards out there. Um, I, I think that we are in a minor rebuild. Like you're right. Like we're ultimately just moving laterally. There's nothing. There's no real movement. I really love. Um, uh, CJ, yeah. love him, but ultimately it doesn't move the needle. Exactly, we're we're staying in the same spot, right? We're gonna be we're gonna be up against Boston or Cleveland and lose in Eastern Conference as our ceiling. Ultimately, we've done nothing, and we're down a point. Guard. More, it's more of a, re, a small retool than a rebuild. And yeah. like I said, I think their their window comes when LeBron James is out of is out of the Eastern Conference or he's on the decline. And right now, they're not positioning themselves well for when that happens because they're gonna be rebuilding at the same time probably as the Cavs are. So, now I want to look at the the other. Do you want to check on? No. Oh, okay. no, no, right, right. Um, mm-hmm. Serge Ibaka, like we said, coming back. Now, they lose Patrick Patterson. Now, I'm not, not his biggest fan. Now, this is, the, this is the kind of problem that I have. So they were in a luxury tax, had to move Corey Joseph because of that, not making too much money. Obviously, the, the uh, Demari Carroll trade, which we've talked about this in the group and not impressed with it in a sense where, you know, Masai went in and signed the guy coming off a torn ACL against LeBron in that series in the East Finals. 
I mean, it was 2015 when Atlanta went on that crazy run. So, yeah. Um, so I, I feel like I love Masai. He's done a good job, a decent job, a great guy. But I think that he has to be on the hook for some of this stuff too. And right? you're sending a first round pick, a second round pick, and Damari Carroll for Jordan Hamilton, the guy they're going to waive anyway. And only a salary they dump. They did too. They did. Yeah. And, and a salary dump, and also you're moving a first and a second. Grant is not going to be a lottery pick, but at the same time, not a good look. It's, it's, a, it's a loss of an asset for, for just to, to get out of a mistake. Exactly. That, right? Exactly. And I don't think that the Raptors are much better looking at it this year. Like I said, I like CJ Miles a lot. I wasn't Patterson's biggest fan, but he's still going to be a loss. A good defender. And when when he was streaky, able to take that three-point shot. Mm-hmm. So you, you do lose some depth. And I think that that's going to hurt them. Well, I mean, they got, I mean with Corey, you, you have to give the long range an opportunity. For sure. Uh, Van Vliet's been, been, been doing close. well in summer league. Van Vliet like, needs to get his minutes as well. Again, he'll be the third stringer at this point. And you also got to see what you got with some of the young guys, that, like Pascal Siakam. And, yeah. I mean, you drafted Jakob. Uh, you drafted Jakob Portal and then you know, top 10 a couple years ago. You got to see what you have in that kid. He's been pulling up double doubles in summer league. Yeah. Well, in uh, summer league, again, isn't the greatest competition. But you need to give those guys minutes at, at some spot. So, I mean, as much as, I, again, they, Patrick and the, it was a good role player off the bench. Uh, Damari just never really got it going here with, the, with his injury issues. And you never really got to see what, what he could really do because he was always injured. Yeah. Um, let's move on. We're staying in the division. Let's talk about the, uh, the Celtics. Now, the Celtics did lose some pieces. They lost yeah. Avery Bradley, uh, a heart and soul guy on that team. He's been there for, for a while. And I think that that's going to hurt them defensively specifically. Um, now they bring in Gordon Hayward, who is a you know a border an all star an all an all star. I think like he made the team last year. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, he made the sure. team last year. But does the, my question is does he make Boston that much better? Is he the missing piece to be Cleveland? No, no. right? <laughs> exactly. You, you feel I don't differently. Maybe. I don't really. Well, okay, so you're losing them. So they lost, they lost David Bradley, who, who was to me probably one of their better defenders. They lost, Kelly, they lost Kelly. They lost Kelly Olynyk. They who lost had, Kelly. Who had, who actually had a pretty decent playoff run. He's on the and they're looking like I, I'm they not. Lost sure. Jarko. He had a big, like, I'm he, pretty. He, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're having. They're gonna send back uh, when they when they make the Gordon Hayward thing official. I believe they're sending back Crowder to the Jazz. That was the it's the still, yeah, of the situation. I, I, I was hearing Crowder and Smart, but I think they might be able to avoid that. Like, let's say they keep. If they lose both those guys, it's still a lot. It's a it's a big it's, loss. It's a big loss. Those are the three best defenders. By so me, yeah. You, I mean, the uh, the draft pick, which was um, it was a uh, Jason Tatum. Tatum. Who I liked a lot. He looked really yeah. good. So he's uh, so he's he's gonna be a good addition. And uh, yeah, I mean, Gordon Hayward's an also, but you like, they lost a lot of pieces. Where I, if you think, I don't think they're substantially better. I mean, they're probably uh, you know, I think Isaiah was carrying a lot of the offensive burden. Um, and again, Al, Al Horford will maybe will get a little bit more spacing in, because of Hayward there. Maybe he turns into a what he was in Atlanta, but to me they're not that much better, and they're not better defensively. So they were they're already a bad, they're already a bad, de- yeah. a bad team exactly. and defensively. So are they better than Cleveland? No. No. Um, I, I do think they've become worlds better on offense. Um, losing Avery Bradley, and if they lose a Crowder. If they lose Crowder, it's a big loss. They're essentially doing exactly what Golden State did, giving away a lot of pieces to get out one guy. Yeah, but yeah. Right. this is not enough. See, the thing with that is that they didn't want to part with Crowder and one of the picks to get Jimmy Butler, and that to me would have been Ivory Butler bigger. higher than Gordon Hayward. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me what they did in that situation. They, they basically ended up getting, to me, a, a worse player where Jimmy would have fit better with, with that team. So, again, I don't know. Danny Ainge has a lot of draft picks coming still. He's still going to probably move a couple of pieces to get some some bigger names, but right now, to me, they, they had so many top-notch draft picks, and then Bill Tatum might turn out to be a really good player. They, they, have they really haven't them. used them all that wisely. Like they really haven't really jumped in there and got that an impact Jim player. Brown hasn't. Like, yeah. It was a rookie year, but he's definitely not a superstar. Marcus Smart also. Marcus yeah. Smart, a real like player. I, said, I think uh-huh. I think Gordon Gordon's a guy that I would rate around the like. I, I wish I think Demar is better than Gordon Hayward, to be honest with you. I, 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 I mean, I couldn't disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah to me, sure. yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a guy that, that puts you over the top. And I mean, no. it's, not, it's not a Chris Paul type of player where with James Harden and so forth. They did make a small, when they sent Brad Leo, they did get Marcus Morris, who will help a little bit inside. Yeah, yeah right. I think yeah. that he averaged about 14 and a half with Detroit. He's a physical guy. But that, that just, that just puts, that's so what they lost him with Olenek, right? Pretty much. Yeah. And that just, I, that I just think, I'd, I'd say that Morris is a better player than Olenek, though. Would you? <coughs> no. 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 Not even close. Olenek is on his way up. Right, like you've seen a couple of those games. What was that 20, 26 yeah, point game off the yeah, bench? Yeah. Like, he, he really was legit unstoppable, right? 
post moves for days, like take him pop or bang out that jump shot. When 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 like when Isaiah goes in, right? People have to help, and when they help, you know what I mean? Like like there's a limit. What like water? I'm not his biggest fan. I, I do like more, especially defensively and rebounding. He's a better defender and rebounder, and they need that. They need yeah, they more lost Amir Johnson. They lost Amir yes. Johnson yes. as well. Yes. So there are, they lost Jurekko and Amir Johnson. They lost all their bigs. But the yeah. only guy that they really kept is Horford, right? It's almost exactly what Golden State did. Yeah. yeah. And, and like we said, well, I'm not uh, They might win a couple more games. They'll still, they'll still win, they'll still win the, the division. And, and, uh, but I, again, they could even finish the first seat again if Cleveland does what they did last year and yeah, rest a bunch of guys. But to me, it's not that a, a much better team than what they were. Yeah, and also, what's the first slightly in the division? Like, what does it mean to win the Eastern Conference? A whole lot nothing. of nothing. Yeah. Cleveland, you know, even if they rest their guys and they walk in at the fourth, uh, at the, the fourth seed, they'll just win the exactly. East running away, so it doesn't matter. All right, so we'll finish up with Boston and move on to Cleveland, like you were just saying. Now, Cleveland really didn't do much there so far. They signed Jack Green, like we just talked about. They're one guy, and I believe they also signed Jose Calderon to be their backup point guard because Darren Williams, wasn't really much last year when they got him. At least with Calderon, he's older, obviously. He might play eight minutes a game, but you know he can shoot the three if he's wide open. That's a big reason they got him. I don't know how much they got left, though. No. But, but they don't have much options, options right? Maybe. When, when, when they have that much luxury tax, they're looking at bargain guys, right? So they pick him up, and like you said, Jeff Green, you're hoping that you can kind of catch some lightning in a bottle, had a very underwhelming career. But, like you said, you, you hope that when you go in there with LeBron, like everybody else, you can he brings his game to the next level and he can defend what he's actually got. Yeah, the thing with them is that I think what, what stopped a lot of guys, well, obviously they, they couldn't really sign any big names because of how much money they spent on the big three, but they're, they're right now in a bit of a state of turmoil because they don't know what's going to happen with LeBron, if he's going to stay, if he's going to go, he's rumored to go to LA. Kyle Ky Reese already telling guys that not, not, not to come, leave, yeah. he leaves, not, not to come through. So at, at the end of the day, they're a team that could really implode this year if things don't go their way. I, I still don't think they'll, they're good enough to beat the Warriors, though, as is. Um, you know, Carmelo Anthony coming or not Car- no Carmelo Anthony coming. I don't know if that makes sense. I still think that Kevin Love is is, is uh, it's the big three to me. It's the big two and a half. Uh, I don't. I, I think Kevin Love isn't the, isn't the player that he was with Minnesota. No, nowhere close. Um, he, he just takes too many games off. He just isn't a factor. I mean, you saw that in the finals. He, he, he was decent one game, and then he'd be a complete non-factor in the rest. To, to compete, you need three big guys that that will bring in every single game like Olmstead has, and right now Kevin's not really doing that. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they had tried to deal him for you know for Paul. If LeBron was going to leave, a deal for Paul George might have made sense because if it was a one-year plan, anyways, right? So swing for the fence. Swing for the fence as well while LeBron's still here, but and then again, now they don't have a GM or, or the GM in place isn't doing a. Anything? Well, do they have a GM in place? That's true. I mean, Chauncey, I don't think they really don't see Chauncey, but they lowball him. They lowball Chauncey, yeah, like they don't. Uh, like, what right I, now they're they're in turmoil. What, what, I read, was, what I read when Dan Gilbert does and it makes sense. He'll sign you to be his GM, but you'll never extend your contract. Yeah. He doesn't want to pay a GM. Yeah. yeah. They have to pay so much, and that's why I guess why he's lowballing all these guys. But you have to pay someone, right? Because I don't know how they mustn't lowball Chauncey a lot. He yeah. made some money in his career. They must not allow him a big deal at all. And also LeBron kind yeah, of plays pseudo GM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. realistic. What does Chauncey know about being an NBA GM? Let's be real. You know, honestly, I'll I, take to be honest, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, he knows how. Well, again, he, well, again, Chauncey's used to, used to like, again, Chauncey's a former guy that's been uh, doing some broadcasting, but he's never really been in that position. Danny Ainge didn't have any of what he did, right? Same yeah, kind of thing. There's all kinds of guys. You have to give them shots, right? Yeah, but Danny Ainge also went over with a couple of different franchises before going to Boston. He didn't go right to the freaking mm-hmm. top of the food chain. Yeah. So, all right, um, let's move on. Oh, then. Uh, let me talk uh, about the Cleveland thing real quick yeah. with Jose Calderon. Right, I think they're bringing in sort of a uh, player coach esque, right? Just like Elton Brand was signed with the Sixers uh, yeah. last year. Elton Brand is going to play any minutes? Like, come on, but he's there to show the other guys how to get better, and yada yada. Jose Calderon legit will not play more than eight minutes a game, but he'll show you know other younger players how to how to um, move the ball and kind of distribute and stuff like that. And I think that's that's why they brought him in. Um, you know, like that's the reason why you bring in players like Calderon and, and Andre Miller for that matter, right? Andre Miller ain't cool. But they, <laughs> and, and, they, and they re-signed the corner to a pretty decent deal. He was, yeah. three years me, I was, a little underwhel- I was a little underwhelmed with what he did with, with the team because I, I thought he would be getting a ton of points considering how many open looks they, they were giving him and he, did, he was kind of struggling in the playoffs. So still got to pay him. You got to pay that guy. Like shooting 50% from three, you got to pay that guy. Wow. <laughs> you know, I believe he's like 34, 35. Yeah. I saw him getting three years ago. <laughs> oh, I wanted to also, uh, getting back to Boston real quick, they did sign Aaron Baines, who, you know what? For, when you're replacing him for a guy like Amir Johnson or something like that on your bench, you could do worse. You could do worse. I don't know. Like, they do need some physical guys, and I guess he brings that. 
Um, not going to move the needle like you said, but that's fine. I want to get to another team in the East that seems like they're on the rise, but not really a superstar. Miami, uh, we saw them last year almost sneak in. They gave Cleveland some problems, probably would beat them in the seven game series. We saw James Johnson in the Jenny Craig. He lost some weight that South Beach diet. Yes. And, yes. and you know what? He looked great. He looked great. Um, and they rewarded him. They four years, $60 million. Kelly Olynyk, four years, $50 million. Dion Waiters, four years, $52 million. So they missed out with Gordon Hayward. They gave a bunch of guys some pretty some pretty uh, serious deals. And also, obviously, Tyler Johnson last year, he gave that four year. See, see, I agree with you with that, that James had a, had a renaissance here because with the Raptors, he was overweight and, and had a lot of issues there. To, to throw four years and $60 million at the guy, that to me is a big, like, I, I, I'd Especially the South Beach mindset. I'd be concerned that by year one or year, like, even year two, that that will look really, really bad. But then again, like I said, I mean, like, a lot of guys got massively overpaid last year. This looks like, like, he's a adjusted market. He, I mean, uh, what does that equal out to? He's, he's getting, what, 15, 30, he's getting $15 million a year. Sure. Well, so, which would you marry Carol about, right? Well, again, yeah, but I did, like, looking at it, like, impact-wise, I mean, he, James had a great season with the Heat, so he kind of earned it, but, yeah. like, I would have given him a two-year deal, probably, Max, to see what he can do with it, but... Sure, but, like, at the same time, like, obviously, everybody's getting paid, right? That $15 million doesn't look like anything. Doing seven. Yeah, when, when dudes are walking around getting $45 million, you know what I mean? Like, what's 15 Well, I mean, like, I mean, like if you look at, at the contracts that were handed out, like, this summer, they actually aren't that bad. There were a couple that were really bad. conservative, I think. Well, like the Tim Hardaway Jr. one is, is ridiculous to me too. Uh, that the Knicks gave him, but of course the Knicks would do that. Here is Pops didn't get paid as much as Tim Hardaway was getting paid in this exactly. one. That's and his exactly. dad didn't I mean, like, that his dad was about 10, 10 times the player. His dad was a awesome. awesome. cross, yeah. baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, where, that, that's ridiculous for them for the most part. But like some guys, like, I like, like Bogdanovich's contract here was, was pretty reasonable. Like Indiana, they need some body drop. They just yeah. need to feel the team, right? So. Yeah, like I said, I, I think a lot of you know, they were a lot more conservative this year than they were last year. They weren't throwing out seventeen, eighteen million dollars at Timothy Mozgov and sure. uh, all that stuff like that. So Brooklyn can't be worse, right? Like they got they, they got the uh, yeah, no, they, well they got Yang's little brother. They got guys that can actually play the not game. Not a fan now. of the boy. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the boy either. Yeah. You know, the Mars going on, so he's not a fan of the guy. I'm not. And you lose I'm not Brooks. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You upset, you upset lots of bro. Low key, low key could be an all star. I, I, I mean, agree with you. They can't be any worse. I, I don't know because they were pretty bad last year. You, th you think some of the young guys will probably come about it yeah. and do some, and do do some things, but um, I, I don't know. And all they're gonna, do, it's, it's his team now. I, I don't know how he's gonna he's gonna handle it. I, you know, they gave up on him pretty quick considering that he was a. Oh, well, because Lamar Ball. Lamar, 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 Lamar Lonzo Lamar, Ball. Lonzo I got Ball. so many of them. Lonzo Ball went in there at two, right? They're not gonna draft two point guards back to back, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going to hold a lot of L's, capital L's, man. They're going to lose all of and, and, and then it's going to be uh, another, another Boston draft pick. Another yeah, high pick. Yeah. What a terrible trade. They're not looking good at all. Uh, Brooklyn, they, they honestly like don't even seem like they, they want to be here. Well, I mean, they, 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 they did fleece the Raptors on, on that DeMar Carroll trade, though. Sure, sure. Yeah, even that. <laughs> That's only because they can eat the money. Um, yeah. Other team that I want to talk about here, Washington. So getting back to uh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn actually gave Otto Porter that max, which was in this case four years, 106. And um, you know, without really blinking, Washington had the max that can have much of a choice. They don't want to pay him that money, but really you don't have much of a decision, right? Like he's your best defender, probably him and John Wall, but he's a wing defender. He shoot the three and, and look what happened. You can shoot the three in this day and age and you get paid. Yeah, but it's, it's funny you mentioned that because Wall threw him under the bus yes. uh, on, the, on, the, on a radio interview recently where they said they were one, one piece away and they, they needed Paul George and right at the position that Otto Porter played. So he threw Porter really under the bus. So that locker room is going to be a little bit... Uh, and I him and Bradley Beal already don't like each other. Much yeah, anymore. like he, he threw a wow, I'm surprised they even, like, okay, they need to keep him, sure, but uh, that's going to be a real, like, bad situation up in, in that place. They already so. had no bench last year, remember? That's why they picked yeah, up Bogdanovich because yeah. they had nobody. Yeah, I like Bogdanovich for sure. Right? Good shooting. He always kills a rapid. Yeah. Always kills a rapid. Comes in and he wets, right? Like, like he will flame your entire defense. Um, thing is with Odo is, like, I'm really intrigued by him. Like, now, I don't know anything really about him, but I'm over here, like, they gave him this money. There has to be some potential here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's well, big money. Well, he did go second or third overall he, in that he's draft. He's a good player. That's why I thought. I thought that Wall really like threw him under the bus for, for, for yeah. no apparent reason. I think Wall just started looking at some of these super team situations and like we we need another freaking all star without really thinking of what he was really well, saying. We 
what we have. And like, I don't, again, I think it's going to be a problem in the locker room considering that, again, you, you think it personally that, that a man wanted to get rid of you or, or upgrade on you. Um, but I think maybe, well, maybe Wall's comments were taken out of context, but he's going to have a lot of smoothing to do. I think, I think Porter's a good player. I think, uh, he is. He's not Paul George. But, he, but he's got it. He's got it. You know, he can defend. He can. You know, he can score a little bit. To me, he's one of the. Yet. To me, he's one of the better defenders that's yeah. forward in the game. Um, and also, what I was going to say is, this is a guy that went from being a potential bust in year one and two. Remember that Raptors series? We all remember when Washington swept them. Yeah. What he did to Demar Derozan. Now we've also seen that it's not hard to do that to Demar Derozan mm-hmm. in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But yeah. at the same time, he blanketed him, and there was not much going on there. And when he's had those tough decisions, sorry, those tough. Has a defending guy who's done a good job. So, so based off of that, then they lost Bogdanovich and, and again the bench division. Do you, do you rate the Raptors ahead of them or behind them? I think Washington ahead of them. I would. I think Washington finishes better. Washington also I'm started debating, off debating. Slow. Debating that. Yeah, like I'm debating because of the bench Washington. situation. I'm debating. I don't know. I think it'll be an interesting little watch because I, I think that like there's a good like four, four or five teams in the East that are pretty much there, and then everybody else is. You know, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I had a smile on my heart. You want to finish up? Oh, I was just thinking. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you why in a second, but go ahead. Okay, um, but now that I think about Washington, right, they got a massive backcourt, right? That's bruising. You know what I mean? Like, like listen, uh, if you're going to have to defend Wall, Beal, both of those guys, 6'5", yes. 6'6", six, 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 you got Odo, which is what, 6'7", ish? I was six eight. Beal, I think, is six four, six five, and Wall is about the same height. They're big yeah. and they're long, yeah. right? And in the backcourt, and like honestly, my ribs hurt just thinking about like having to like defend them all day. You know what I mean? Like just someone kind of yeah. bumping me and muscling me all day, and especially with uh, uh, Gortat as well. And they, they may have actually passed the Raptors in terms of a better backcourt. And we talked about that for a lot. The Raptors have one of the better ones in the league behind Golden State. Now it seems like uh, the Raptors might be trending downward, especially with Kyle aging. And then Wall obviously having that you know, superstar season last year, and and Beal finally being healthy after that match that they gave him. Smile on my face though was for, I was gonna say I should have worn my Joel and Beecher because I'm trusting the process right now. And you guys both know I know you're not on that wagon, and you're probably not either. But I'm saying right now, look out for the Sixers because I do think the Sixers could could make some noise here. Are they maybe going to win much? No, but I still think they might be able to get the five seed in, in this in this conference. We, we were actually debating that before the show on where we were going to put them. It really just depends if they if they can stay healthy, right? Of course. I mean, that's, right now they got the matting hurts on the, the NBA because it looks like every draft pick gets hurt. You don't know what you're going to get in, out of Simmons yet because he hasn't played an NBA regular season. Simmons is going to be a star. I'm going to go on the record. Like, sure, but he's going to be a star. The only thing is it just is health like and then beat and if it begins. Sure, if you look at all the guys they've got, they can be a very, uh, if they stay healthy, Man, not, they were they were pretty they, they were pretty dominant when Embiid was actually playing. They and that's played pretty well. Uh, JJ Redick, right? Like this is a, this yeah. is a veteran that can you know can drop you 16, 18 points a game right. on a young team, a good shooter. I'm glad that you brought up JJ Redick, and this is the reason why I don't feel like anything's gonna make like none of this makes much of a difference because JJ Redick is useless when you don't have somebody to give him the ball, right? JJ Redick, JJ Redick will start under in, in, in the hole underneath the basket. And then take a double screen on each side, right? Maybe an elevator screen, running around, mm-hmm. right? Catch the ball, but if he doesn't have somebody to pass him that ball, he's a spot up shooter. Yeah, he's a spot up shooter. It's useless. Like you're not gonna like, hey JJ, here's the ball. But like, everywhere, the everywhere he's been, he hasn't always been with the elite point guards, and I feel like no matter where he's been, he's been fine. But he's had Chris Paul, obviously, but since then, Orlando, Phoenix. Jameer Nelson was damn good at that. At the, yeah, but one, he was, he was top good. five guy. I think he was good. He was good. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't think he's going to average less than 15 points if he's healthy, right? Yeah, Chris Paul gave him the ball. That's true, too. I don't know, I mean, it all depends on you know, how guys mesh with certain teams, right? They have other guys that... Robert Covington, another solid player, that uh, sleeper. I don't really rate Covey like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, li- I like him as a fifth option or a sixth man. Yeah. He's pretty good. He can hit the three as well. Right? And then they had the... They had the oh, McC- McCormick? I was really impressed with one of like, the guy that was playing point for them right there near, near the end. It's, it's oh, McConnell. McConnell, there yeah, it is. McConnell did good. Yeah, yeah, McConnell did good. well. I'm like, yeah, you never know. Maybe name Nick Stauskas, you know, a little Canadian content. He might still play something. Rashard, Rashard or Rashard Holmes. Another yes. pretty finish, like yeah. a good end of the season. I was looking at the numbers and I, when he came to Toronto, I was watching him. I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. He, he really impressed me. I don't know. I think that they, they have high potential. Like I said, are they going to win a title this year? No, but they're definitely trending upwards. And I, I I do feel that they might be able to finish fifth and, and the East because the East is very weak obviously, yeah. right? So definitely a playoff spot. Who's Red Brown? Red Brown. They're not gonna make the 
<laughs> it's coming from the pop culture shit, right? Like, like, no, no. Like, Who do you think he's the coach? Like, listen, they, they might get sick as eighth or seventh, to be honest, right? But they're they're doing nothing the for us. You know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna want to watch them. I think I think if they're all healthy, it'd be something to watch. Yeah. Right. But it old man Jamal putting his foot down right now. Right? You want to see some bigger roles? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I, I thought I thought Embiid in the games that he actually played was was, was really entertaining. Well, I, mean, I, I, I think I think ben, ben Simmons, if he actually plays the potential, that could be a really enjoyable team to watch. That's a it's a really good young and young best, gun time best team. Best young core in basketball. The only team that I think really yeah. challenges them is Minnesota. But right? it's all about the healthiness. Yeah, yeah but also that's a conversation people have almost every year about Milwaukee. Oh yeah, no, they're young. Oh, they can score. Oh, they can do this. Oh, they're on their way up. You know what I mean? Like uh, with, Milwaukee, I don't feel the same way. But I feel like they're two years ago you might have. Well, I mean, I, I mean, again, we had this conversation. I think Milwaukee is only getting better with the players that they have, mm -hmm. and, and Giannis is only going to get better. And again, he right now he's pretty to me. He's almost unguardable right now in the league because he's. It's physical. He reminds me a lot of LeBron in terms of, of his physical features. He's almost unguardable, that, that kid. And it's scary. Like, I didn't get a, to see a lot of him until that, that series. Raptors series. Man, that kid was tremendous. Nobody with, 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 some, with, some, with some better support cast, supporting cast. Yeah, that's, a, that's a real dangerous thing. Did you see that put back where he, like, was didn't even jump jump yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's pretty like, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Yeah, that's yeah, some Yao Ming stuff. That's, yeah, right. that's not real. This isn't that's, real. Uh, that, that Greek freak moniker is... Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Um, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, let's move on from there. Maybe if there's one more team that you guys want to touch on, maybe that we're missing. Well, Atlanta's going to be a disaster this year, obviously. Well, well, that's the thing. I mean, if you look at Atlanta's going to be rebuilding the day Dwight Howard's done, Paul Millsap is done. We're not going to be a factor. Well, Adam's not going to be a factor. Indiana is, is, I guess, basing their team off now, off of Miles Turner. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, the disaster. The Knicks, are they keeping Carmelo? Are they trading Carmelo? You don't know what they're going to do. I feel like Carmelo is just, just, just moments before Phil Carmelo Jackson getting, getting thrown out. To me, was the best thing for them because, I don't know, he, he just wasn't doing a good job. I mean, I love Phil. I think Phil's probably the best coach of, of all time in, in the league. Uh, I mean, yeah, the resume speaks for it, for itself. Sure. The man, as a GM, he was he was about awful. Like I'm hearing rumors of man sleeping during workouts, like like unprofessionalism. Hundred years old. He, he's an old man. <laughs> so like, he, uh, I, you know, truthfully, I mean, like, come on. If the Knicks come up to you and be like, "Yo, here's thirty million dollars a year," yeah. heck yeah, I'm Get taking to work. it. I'm taking it too. Yeah. No, I didn't. They like he's really like I, I'm a right. What, what I didn't. Are you gonna remember Phil Jackson as one of the bad as one of the what the hell do they call him? The, the, the no, guru? The guru, whatever yeah. they call him. Are you going to remember him as the guy that coached Michael Jordan and, and the Lakers to all those titles? Or are you going to remember him as the, the senior grandfather? As, as the senior <laughs> grandfather and then, then the Knicks. In a couple of years, then, nobody will remember he even was a part of the Knicks organization. Yeah. And I didn't like the pick. I want to I touch on that Knicks. Because Frank, <laughs> Frank Nickelby or whatever. Like, and even like the draft guys are saying his best case scenario is, is like a middle of the pack player. Yeah, remember, and almost nobody like that poor Zinkas pick either. Yeah, that's it. I feel like I remember, I remember those, those, those Instagram memes with that New York guy going yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Who the heck is that? Who the heck is this? Yeah, and then the yeah, next year, the heck is this? yeah. But, yeah. But like I said, and we're gonna touch on the West right after this quick break. But I do like Dennis Smith, and I feel from the time I said Dennis Smith was the better guy, they're really gonna regret him because we talked about him. he's killing the summer league, dunking over everybody in, in, in his way. Well, like I said, it, is, it was the New York next thing to do. I guess we'll see. Like, like I said, they need to build a team up with Porzingis. They gotta get rid of Carmelo. They, they obviously wanted to get rid of him earlier on when Phil was there. Just better to move on. Lastly, before I forget, Chicago. Oh, that's, Getting that's, rid of Jimmy Butler. And a lot exactly of people a lot of people uh, gave the L to them in that trade. Oh. But then uh, I was watching, there was this ESPN uh, segment they had uh, on TV. And they were talking about how GMs look at trades and not only assets, but they look at the points. The points you bring in, the points you bring out. And Jimmy, I think, was at like 24. They brought in um, Chris Dunn, who I think was averaging six points. He's only going to get better. He can't get much worse, right? He's a top five pick, right? And then they bring in um, Chris Dunn, was Lor Lorian, the draft pick they got, the mm -hmm. tall finish guy. That's a another seven footer that can shoot the three, which they definitely need help shooting. And um, yeah, what else did they get? There was, there was something else in that, in that pick. Maybe they got another pick. I don't really remember. But at the end of the day, Chicago's going to be rebuilding. Dwayne Wade's still there. They might be in the fold for a top three pick this year, which is really what they need. So, so basically, again, the whole the back to the whole Jimmy Butler thing. You, you look at Levine and you look at Dunn. Levine, sorry, Levine, yeah, Levine yes, Levine and Dunn. You look at that situation. If they were so persistent about getting Crowder off of Boston, that's the thing. was the big issue. The Boston was willing to give up, give up a pick. If you had the opportunity, let's say let's say you have Levine and Dunn. Who again? Levine is 
kid can dunk out, dunk like crazy. But he can score in the league. He can score. He can league. score. Again, I don't know what, what his ceiling is, if he can do much more than what he was doing. Uh, Chris Dunn, I thought, was going to be a decent player. He hasn't shown that yet. Would you have taken two first rounders instead of those two? Let's say you could have had Tatum at three or or, or, or so forth, and then, and then you grab Butler that way. Would you have taken Tatum at next? Let's say Brooklyn's pick next year. I don't think they would have given one and I think Crowder. That was what they were asking for. Boston said no to that. Boston said no to one of those picks and Crowder, which. To me, was which they're gonna give, which they're gonna give Crowder up for freaking Gordon Hayward anyways. Which or they're gonna lose him to free agency because they won't be able to resign. He's I making like four million dollars. That doesn't year. matter. See that to me, I think that doesn't make any sense for Chicago. That doesn't make any goddamn sense for Boston either. Well, I would have taken Tatum over over the other other two. I think Tatum has has a higher ceiling. The better score. It reminds me almost of like a Carmelo, and just where he's going to part of a young Carmelo would pick you part of an offense. What which which is great. Do you get what I mean? No, exactly. Carmelo's special. And again, and that so that type of player. And maybe not have a star. serious injury that was season-ending injury with his leg. You don't know yeah, what you're getting with that. Right. Yeah. Actually, before you move on to you know past the Eastern Conference, I wanted to bring up real quick. Charlotte's a sleeper. That's what we're forgetting. You have Dwight Howard. I'm now yes. we've all yeah, had Dwight. Dwight. Yeah. 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 Not everybody loves Dwight Howard, but like he still does his thing. He'll give you he gives you a double double. Yeah. 14 and 10 or something this yeah, year. In his sleep, he'll get you a double double. Yeah, but what does it tell you that the, the guy goes home to Atlanta and That's they ship him off after a year? Good. That to me says there's something there's something up with, with, with him in terms yeah. of either he, there's something in the locker room that just isn't right. Is they gave up on him. Like they, they lost Will Sapp. They gave up on him. They gave up on him. Real early. If, if that's what I was going to say. Maybe they're just looking at it like, you know what? Nobody's going to sign here. Guys have. You know what I mean? There's been some guys, but they're looking at a top three pick, is what I'm trying to get at, maybe, and just get rid of everybody well, you have. But what was Dwight's going to keep you? But from. what was the point of signing that deal last year? If you were, if after a year of the experiment, it was a wrap, and you call it a day. They lost four for the one to put another big yeah. center with, uh, with Millsap, right? Like, uh, I'm just trying to get in their way. Maybe, maybe you know, they could well. re sign Millsap, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, where where is the situation going to be on his way? Like he he turned down the player option, right? Kemba had a big deal. Like I think Charlotte's a playoff team. Yeah, so, I don't know. They, they, they yeah, actually might push for that last sleeper, right? Yeah. He's great every single year. Yeah, he's he's yeah. Oh. It'll be great to see some more emotion from. We're not going to get that. No, but he's what he is. No, he's a he's a jack of all trades kind of guy. Yeah, I I really do like. I him like a lot. Team. I like yeah. his game. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's wrap up with the East. We're gonna take a quick break and touch on the Western Conference. A lot of stuff to talk about over there. Starting off with the Golden State Awards. We'll be back on block. Just 31 minutes. Just hit that pawn button. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pour myself another beer. Yeah.